I had a smile on my face a big one. Not surprising really as I was sat there looking at my beautiful young wife Wendy. 27 years of lovely womanhood, average height, slim, but with jutting breasts that couldn't easily be hidden. Quite recently they hadn't been of course, but I'm getting ahead of myself. No doubt about it she was gorgeous. So why would I be smiling when she was crying, you may ask? Well I'll tell you. I was smiling because she was crying and I'll be happy to explain to you all exactly why. Listen carefully. It all started less than six months ago or at least that's when I first felt the wind of change. Wendy and I were living in North London, where I worked for a local firm of solicitors, having been recently made a partner. Ashley Burks and Scrummings Old man Scrummings was on the point of retiring and Ashley and Burks were long gone. There were three other partners, and they like me were just waiting for Scrummings to go, so that we could move into the 20th century. How long further it would then take to move up to the 21st was anybody's guess. Yes our firm were, to say the least, a traditional old-fashioned outfit. Wendy and I were very happy together, with a nice house, two new cars, a Jaguar and a Porsche and membership of the local country club. Love was good. No it was very good, and after seven years of marriage appeared to me to be reasonably frequent. So nothing wrong there was there? Wrong. Though I didn't know it till one Thursday night. Derek, Wendy said to me as we were finishing the last dregs of wine. Do you ever feel we need a bit more variation? Why? I answered right back, holding up the empty bottle. I thought you liked this Cote de Rhone as much as I do. It was one of our favorite wines, but boy, did I misunderstand what she was on about. I'm talking about love not wine you bloody fool, she giggled at me. Now that really was about the last thing that I expected. What's wrong with our love life? I managed to ask, after my initial shock had died down. Oh, I don't know Derek, she replied wistfully. Sometimes well sometimes I just wonder. Having got me that far, she refused to speak about it any further that night, and left me wondering what type of love she wanted us to explore. What position hadn't we yet tried? Actually it sounded quite promising to me at the time. Have you ever thought about making love to another woman? Wendy dreamily demanded, giving my little man an extra squeeze. Yes. That was all I said, and of course it was true, but the real reason for my brevity was not wishing to put her off from what she was doing to my Watsit. Anyone in particular? Oh God woman, shut up and get on with it. That's what I thought, but of course that's not what I said to her. Your friend Gail Mick's wife Halle Berry. I could have gone on. But I didn't mean it of course. Well. Maybe I did mean it and maybe I didn't, but we were only joking weren't we? What about if you really could, she carried on. Not Halle Berry of course, and Gail is a real tight nut. But what if you could? I suddenly came to my senses a bit. What was my wife angling at? You mean Mick's wife? I asked incredulously. Now that was a thought. God, what a thought, and if you'd seen Mick's wife, you'd know what I mean. Mick's wife was a high-heeled lover and possessed the most fantastic pair of long slender legs imaginable. She used them to the max, wearing skirts so short they left little to the imagination. And her boobs? Well less said about more, the better. This was getting very interesting. No silly, Wendy laughed back at me, spoiling my fantasy. I don't mean anyone in particular. Just if the possibility opened up. Bloody hell. What was my lovely, hitherto sweet little wife getting at? Did she fancy a threesome or something? Me, her and who knows what other gorgeous creature. Bloody hell. Pity about Mick's wife, but let's ride with the flow. Anybody in mind then? I asked as casually as I could, desperately trying to erase Mick's wife's legs from my imagination. Not really, she came back. Maybe a couple we could swap with or something. I was so taken up with my dreams that I hardly noticed what she had said. Besides, what Wendy was doing to my private parts by then quite threw me. It felt great. Like better than just great. I lay there happily leaving her to it, and a few moments later I found my erection sliding easily inside her. 
That first penetration always felt so fantastic. Well, it always does, doesn't it? Nothing more was mentioned that night as we screwed the night away. In fact, I don't think we talked about anything. A good three evenings later, we were sat watching the telly. EastEnders she liked it, but I wasn't so sure. I wasn't really concentrating to tell you the truth. Have you thought about it? She asked out of the blue. I think Ricky will get the girl, I responded, trying to remember what was happening on the screen in front of us. No silly, she giggled. Not this program. About sharing. Us and another couple. What do you call it? You mean swinging? I replied, astonished at the turn our conversation had suddenly taken. Oh, so you have been thinking about it then Derek. Damn it. How in damnation did I fall for that one? Well if you really want to, she said quite seriously. I might think about it. I might, but I'm not too sure. Hang on. Just hang on a minute. Who was leading who, here? Where did you get these ideas from Wendy? I queried. Wasn't me that started it, she claimed. I'm not saying I'm not intrigued by the idea, but, well, I don't really know. At that point, I really, honestly, wished that I hadn't had so much to drink earlier on. I really shouldn't have finished that second bottle. Where the hell was this going and did I want to go there? There's one of my clients from work who's into swinging. Damn it to hell was this really my wife speaking? Stop it. Shut up. Close the subject. But fool that I am, what did I actually say? Who's that then Wendy? Bloody stupid, and in any case, what I really meant of course, was what was his wife like? No I didn't. I didn't mean that. Bugger it yes I did. I felt ashamed. Wendy saw through me and guessed what I was thinking. His wife is very pretty I think, Wendy went on fairly casually. But I wasn't thinking of them but well maybe, I don't really know. I got my brain in gear. No. I thought about it for a few seconds more. No Wendy, I said firmly. Fantasize about it all you want, but I really don't think we should go down that path. That's all I was doing honey, just fantasizing. Damn it I knew from experience, that every time she called me honey, then she was up to something. One thing led to another. I haven't explained that though I was a solicitor, my wife was a barrister at law, and as such spent her life in court twisting people round to her way of thinking. She had a very analytical brain and was very good at her job, and usually got the better of me in an argument. Where Wendy wasn't so good was long-term planning or strategy, and if it wasn't for me, then we'd probably never book a summer holiday. No my wife lived for the here and now, and had always been that way. When we'd first met nearly nine years ago, Wendy had been a bit of a girl, with a reputation to match. Not that she went with just anyone, but when she set her sights on some unsuspecting chap, then he was more or less doomed, yes doomed to end up in her bed whether he'd planned to or not. Believe me, I can vouch for that and the fact that it wasn't a terrible fate. However, I had never participated in a multi-partner love affair that Wendy was known to have participated in, and that was one of the things in her past that I preferred not to dwell on too much. I knew she'd done them but I didn't want to know how many, and in any case that was all in her past, before we'd even met. I sometimes wondered if it was pure coincidence that I was her main boyfriend when she finished university, because it was then that she changed completely. Maybe she suddenly grew up, or perhaps she realized that the career she had chosen simply wouldn't accept such rash behavior. Either way, I benefited, she settled down and become the perfect, faithful wife, never once giving me any reason to doubt her. Didn't mean that I never thought about it though. Two weeks later found the two of us sitting in a swish bar in town, waiting for James Bloody Perry to turn up with his wife. Yes, she'd talked me into at least talking to this couple about it. James apparently had his own business making Christmas cards and things, and though not a big business at all, it must have given him a comfortable living. But his wife well I knew nothing about her, and Wendy hadn't been very forthcoming. Let's make it clear we weren't swapping that night no bloody way. We were simply meeting them for a drink. We might talk about the subject and even ask questions. But that was all. That didn't mean that I wasn't nervous. 
Equally it didn't mean that I wasn't intrigued myself. I'd played the field quite a bit before I met Wendy, certainly not as much as she had, but even so, the thought of a bit of strange didn't exactly give me a raging headache. My mind was by then in a bit of turmoil to be honest. As far as Wendy was concerned, could a leopard change its spots? Was this her way of telling me that she missed her old ways, but didn't want to cheat on me? What was I going to do if it was? I couldn't help but think that I was in a spot. A bit damned if I did and damned if I didn't. Pity the poor leopard. Here they come, cried out Wendy, jumping to her feet and kissing some hunk of a guy who had just come in on the cheek. We introduced ourselves. Wendy, Derek James and Tanya. Christ Almighty. Tanya. James was I suppose about 30, maybe the same age as me. Tanya was well about maybe damn it she was fucking beautiful. She couldn't have been more than early 20s, with a face to dream about and a body to launch a thousand erections. This couple swapped? Why the hell would the bloody fool want to swap a woman that looked like her? The evening passed pleasantly enough, though I found myself somewhat tongue-tied when I tried to talk to Tanya. I discovered that James supported Spurs, and as an Arsenal supporter that didn't exactly endear me any more towards him. However, we parted friends and promised to meet up again shortly. You fancied her, didn't you? Coming from my wife that seemed a stupid question. Not that I hadn't noticed the interaction between her and James. Oh golly, the next few days were difficult. Wendy gently pushed and encouraged, suggested and hinted, till at last the question was on the table. Were we, or were not going to do it? No. That was my answer, tempting though the delicious Tanya was. Okay, she responded. Forget it. But she didn't, and in fairness, neither did I entirely. The following Tuesday saw us at the same bar waiting for the same beautiful couple. Nothing was decided, but the possibility, vague though it was, was indeed there. We had agreed to take our time. To talk, to explore, ask questions and go away and think about it, whatever. In my mind this was just another meeting, though I have to admit I was tempted. When I saw Tanya again I was really very tempted indeed. She had long dark lustrous hair, big dark dreamy brown eyes and a cute little turned up nose. I found myself getting hot round the collar when I speculated whether her pretty little breasts turned up in the same way. Tanya stood about 5 foot 3 and with her gorgeous vaguely half Asian appearance, could easily have been some magazine model. With the short blue mini dress that she had on, her shapely tan legs seemed to go on and on forever. Yes, okay, I've got a thing about long slim legs. The first time we'd met I hadn't really taken too much notice of James, and it was only this time that I recognized how attractive he would be to a woman like my wife. A bit taller than me, a little broader in the shoulders than me, and likely some women would find him a bit better looking than me. Bastard. If this bugger thought he was going to get inside my wife's knickers, then he had another thing coming. We had a second drink then a third and I began to relax and feel more and more comfortable chatting to the delightful Tanya. I heard my wife giggle and I looked over at the other couple, surprised to note how close they were sat together and how comfy they looked. I thought about saying something, but it seemed a little churlish, as they weren't actually doing anything that I would have complained about if it had been any other friend. A few moments later and Tanya casually put her hand on my leg while telling me some story about when she'd been at school. A quite innocent gesture except perhaps that her hand was actually more than halfway up my thigh. I rather liked it. Well of course I bloody well did, but the thumping in my heart and the dryness in my throat warned me to be careful. I glanced over at the other two, to see if Wendy had noticed. I didn't want to ask Tanya to take her hand away, but I didn't want to give the other two any encouragement. I didn't have to. My mouth fell open as I noted the changes since I had last checked them out and saw that they were even closer than before. Not only that but bloody James had his hand on my wife's thigh, at least as high up as Tanya was holding me. The difference perhaps was that Wendy had a short skirt on and her legs were bare. The bugger had his hand on her bare skin, not six or seven inches from her panties. It was only then that I realized where his other hand was. James's elbow was propped on the back of the bench they were sat on, which left his hand hanging loosely out towards Wendy. As they talked he was slowly stroking the back of his hand up and down against the side of my wife's lightly covered breast. 
Hang on and oh. Too fast much too fast and I wasn't ready for that. His hand on her bare leg was bad enough, but he was actually caressing her left tit right there in front of me. Wendy, James, I cried out, trying to keep my anger in check. I'm not sure about all this. The two of them looked over at me in surprise, and Tanya took her hand away from my leg. What's up Derek, asked my wife, the huskiness of her voice only confirming that she had been enjoying what James had been doing to her. What's up? I copied her. He's been feeling your tits Wendy. Damn it, he's still doing it as we talk. Wendy looked down to where James's hand was still slowly stroking her breast despite my intervention and smiled. She deliberately stuck her breast out, pushing it against his hand, and then reached up and kissed him on the cheek. So what Derek? She said, looking back round at me. I don't mind at all. In fact, I'm enjoying it. For Christ's sake Wendy, I spat out at her. You can't let him do that to you. Why not? She asked flippantly. Why not? Wasn't it bloody obvious why not? We hadn't agreed to go through with this, and I hadn't agreed that he could feel up her breasts. We're in a public bar Wendy, I reminded her, trying to keep my voice in check. This is not the place to be arguing about this. The two of them glanced at one another quickly, and then Wendy looked back, staring intently straight at me, as if daring me to contradict her. You're right Derek, she said at last. This isn't the place. I felt the tension drain out of me, thinking that she'd come to her senses. It was short-lived. Come on then James, my wife said to the other man, smiling warmly at him. Let's take this somewhere else. We'll see you in the morning then, declared James, standing up and taking Wendy's arm. Pardon. What? You and Tanya can have our place, added Wendy, smiling at me as if everything was agreed. We'll go back to James's place. Hang on I haven't agreed. I didn't want this to happen. I didn't know what I wanted. Wendy kissed me on the cheek and left me standing there like a fool. My brain would hardly accept what I was hearing and I must have been standing there with my mouth gaping open in shock. Then Tanya stood up and molded her lovely lithe body against mine, and blow it, my treacherous resolve dissolved. It was there and then that I lost it. I should have reacted differently and then maybe, just maybe things would have worked out differently. But maybe not. Either way I just stood there like an idiot, unable to do anything to stop this all happening. I watched as my wife collected her things, linked arms with James, and turned to leave. Enjoy yourself Derek, she lightly commented. See you in the morning. I still wasn't sure that this was all happening, and events simply washed over me. I watched in silence as my wife of seven years walked out of the bar, chatting and giggling to bloody James as she clung like a limpet to his arm. Oh what the hell had I done? Or not done? He was taking my wife away to fuck her. I wasn't doing anything to stop it. Are you ready to go then Derek? Asked a sweet sounding voice beside me, as Tanya cuddled up even closer to me. Confusion. Wendy and James disappeared from sight as they rounded the corner. I looked down at Tanya for some sort of guidance. I really shouldn't have done that. It was my final undoing, stupid sod that I was. How could I turn down a girl who looked just like Tanya? My eyes focused on her breasts, on the slit in the front of her dress that left half of her lovely, small but full rounded breasts exposed to my gaze. I had to know. I had to know that very night. I had lost. I smiled at Tanya, intent on expressing how unsure I was about all of this. She smiled back at me, her deep brown eyes promising so much. But damn it, wasn't she just so damn beautiful? That bastard James even left me to pay the damn drink bill. An hour later found the two of us back at my house in bed, and really what can I say? When she'd slipped out of her slinky dress, to reveal no more than a tiny pair of thong panties underneath, then my heart had stopped beating for a moment. There are lovely bodies, and perfect bodies, and I thought Wendy was in the latter group till I saw Tanya. Her skin was a light olive color, as if it had a light tan, and there wasn't so much as a blemish anywhere. Her breasts were somewhat smaller than Wendy's, but that made them no less beautiful, firm and firm, they rose proudly on their own, as if daring me to take me for her. They say that sometimes the truth is stranger than fiction. 
In this case reality was even more beautiful than imagination. As I hugged her and ran my hands over her silky naked skin, I began to ponder who would regret this exchange the most in the coming weeks. Lovemaking with Wendy had been fantastic in my opinion, but Tanya, though young, had taken me to another level. How in hell would I ever face Wendy again, knowing what I'd done, and how good it had been? Then again, how would I face her, knowing what she had done? It worried me how good it had been for Wendy with that James, and whether it could ever be the same for us again. Though in fairness, I didn't think about that at the time. Tanya left at 9 in the morning, giving me a kiss and saying she hoped we might meet again soon, and Wendy returned at 9.30. Couldn't have timed it better if they had planned it. I wonder why I didn't think more about that at the time. I was simply embarrassed when she walked in. Upset with her that she'd maneuvered me so, but ashamed that I had so willingly gone along with it, and not a little confused at how much I had enjoyed the experience. How was your night? Wendy as. Cad me hesitantly. Okay, how was yours? Okay, she replied with a grin. Within moments the pair of us were grinning and laughing, and I realized with very mixed feelings indeed, that our life would never be the same again. I tried not to sound too eager when Wendy told me she had made a tentative arrangement to meet the couple again a week later. When the day approached my wife told me that she had arranged with James to go out for dinner with him, and that she would meet up with him at the restaurant. I was to meet Tanya at the bar we had first met at. That was fine with me, as though I was certainly looking forward to my time with the lovely Tanya, I really wasn't too miffed about not having to spend time with the guy who was banging my wife. We'll have our place tonight Derek, and this time you can go to their house. Well that seemed fair enough as well. Watching Wendy getting ready for her date, gave me second thoughts. Do you think James will like these white panties Derek, or shouldn't I bother with any? Not really a question that I wanted to be asked in the circumstances. But I'd agreed to carry on with this thing, so I had to just accept it. Try to think of Tanya getting ready at that moment, and wonder what she would be wearing. M. Now there was a thought. The white ones are fine dear, I replied trying to keep my feelings in check. Just had to grin and bear it, and I'd never been terribly keen on the white ones anyway. I admit to having a lump in my throat as Wendy kissed me briefly on the lips as she left. What the hell were we doing? With a sigh, I closed the door behind me, and left for my own date with the beautiful Tanya. Life was tough maybe, but it could be worse couldn't it? Half an hour later I found myself sat at the bar sipping my beer and waiting for my date. Looking forward to seeing Tanya drift in and enjoy the moment as every male eye in the place would take her in and be jealous of me. Wondering what skimpy creation she would be clad in that evening and looking forward a little later to removing it. I had to admit that after seven years of marriage, dating another beautiful girl was exciting. The time of our meeting arrived and passed. Then another half hour and I started to get agitated. My mobile phone rang and I relaxed, assuming it was Tanya to tell me she was running a bit late. Hi honey. Ouch. It was Wendy on the phone, calling me honey. Bad news I'm afraid Derek. Tanya's come home from work this evening not feeling well, and won't be able to make it tonight. Oh shit. Where are you then Wendy? I asked her, trying my best to keep the disappointment out of my voice. I'm with James, she replied. He left before Tanya got home, and she's just rang him to let you know that she won't be able to make it. Damn it, I responded. What are you going to do then Wendy? Are you coming home? There was an ominous silence at the other end. So silent that I could hear my heart beating wildly. Well Wendy, what are you going to do? I repeated. Well actually Derek, I was sort of planning on still going ahead with my date with James. If that's okay with you honey? It wasn't. It really, really wasn't okay with me at all. A swap is a swap, but. Well. Bloody hell. It just wasn't fair, and I told her so. Please Derek, be reasonable about this. I know it must be disappointing for you, but James has just bought me dinner, and we were having such a nice time. Well I'm not Wendy, I retorted. I was never too keen on all this in the first place, and now I've had enough. Oh please Derek, just this one night. No Wendy, I shot back at her. It's time we bought this to an end. 
Look, Derek. What about if I don't spend the night with him? What about if I just stay the evening with him? I can't just stand up now and walk out on him. I hadn't thought that one out too clearly, and what she said was reasonable. I guess she at least had to stay and finish the meal. Okay, I replied reluctantly. But I'll expect you home by 11. Oh come on Derek. I was thinking more around 2 or 3 o'clock. No way Wendy. How about 1 o'clock then? She suggested. 12 at the latest, I heard myself saying. Split the difference and call it 12.30. Oh damn it what difference did it make? Okay, I'll expect you home by half past midnight then, I reluctantly conceded. No Derek, Wendy corrected me. I'll expect you back sometime after that time. Don't forget we had our house this time. The bloody cheek. Go to his bloody house, I shouted down the phone. Then there's no way I'll be back by 12.30 honey. God that bloody woman. I told you she could twist me round her finger in an argument. No wonder she won so many of her cases in court. Okay go to his damn house then, I replied back angrily. There was no way that I was going to hang around bars until it was safe to go back to my own house. See you about two then honey, Wendy got in quickly, and rang off. The cow. The bloody bitch. She'd con me into that, and I could imagine her sitting there grinning all over her face. I could have rang her back, but didn't see the point. So she was going to get fucked by another man again tonight, and I was going home on my own. It wasn't fair. What upset me the most? That my wife was going to bed with someone else, or that I wasn't getting Tanya in exchange? Difficult question, and I didn't really know the answer. Perhaps the most upsetting fact was that Wendy preferred to be with James that night rather than with me. That hurt. Left me feeling empty inside. Okay, so I have no idea what time she actually got in as I was fast asleep. It certainly wasn't the time she had promised though, but at least she was there beside me in bed when I woke up. What time did you get in last night? I asked her when she came to. Oh don't ask, was all she managed. I'm worn out. And why would that be? As if I didn't know. Oh, you better not ask about that either, Wendy giggled mischievously. She thought it amusing, but I couldn't say that I thought the same thing. I was truly pissed off. I simply didn't know why I had let myself be dragged down this path of swapping and swinging. All right, I had truly enjoyed my time with Tanya, and it had been like a wet dream come true. But to risk our precious marriage? To risk spoiling the special relationship that I thought I had with my wife? No. It really wasn't worth it at all. This had to be the last time. I got up and got dressed, while Wendy turned back over and fell asleep. I didn't see her again till early afternoon when she came bouncing downstairs like a teenager. What a lovely day, she sung, as she skipped up to me, threw her arms around me and kissed me full on the lips. She was in a good mood, and I decided the time was ripe to suggest that our swinging adventure should perhaps come to an end. I've arranged to meet up with James again next Tuesday, Wendy informed me happily, beating me to it. Oh really, was all I managed, my temper rising. Afraid Tanya's still not feeling too well, but maybe the next time. No. What do you mean no? My wife asked me, looking up in surprise. No means no Wendy, I insisted. I'm not putting up with it. But you agreed to it Derek, she almost spat at me. It was you that suggested it. I breathed in deeply several times, not wishing to reply with something that I might regret. You will not be going out and fucking bloody James whatever his name is, and that's final. And how will you stop me? She asked, her temper rising to match mine. Good question. How could I, short of locking her up or standing guard over her 24 hours a day? I can't, but if you do, then don't expect me to be here when you get back. Seemed a measured response to me but Wendy looked at me as if I declared war on France or something. You don't mean that do you? Try me, I replied. Wendy stood her ground, but I refused to back down, so we stood and stared daggers at one another for some while. At last she realized that maybe she had pushed me too far, and she relaxed, trying to put me at ease. Okay, she said. 
I can see your point. I don't suppose it is very fair on you. With that, she shrugged her shoulders and went off to make herself something to eat. But the point was, she hadn't seen my point at all. All she saw was that it wasn't fair to me if she was making love and I wasn't. Apparently it didn't get through to her that I was just unhappy with our new marital relationship. I may have won the battle, but it seems I haven't won the war yet. Not the one with France, you understand. It was more serious than that. We hardly spoke the rest of the day, but in the evening in bed she pressed herself against me and rubbed herself lovingly against me. She was naked, which usually meant only one thing. You're not worried about me not giving you enough attention are you honey? She asked silkily. What do you mean? Well, you know Derek, she continued. There's not enough love just because I'm seeing someone else. What do you think, Wendy? Well there's nothing to worry about honey, she cooed. I will always love you and you're still my favorite in the sack. Is that why we haven't made love since the first time you went with that bastard James? I demanded forcibly. Is that what you mean? She gasped. But Derek. I mean. Is it? Oh shit. I'm so sorry my love. Wendy proceeded to make amends as enthusiastically as she could, and we spent the next hour or so sucking and fucking like a pair of rabbits. I couldn't help but compare Wendy's big full breasts with Tanya's small pert ones. Which were best? The only decision that I could come to was that whoever's tits I was feeling would seem to be the best at the time. At last she sighed, thanked me for such a wonderful night and rolled over and went to sleep. For my part, I lay there for some time th. Inking. I was wondering if for the first time in my marriage, whether I had just been supplied with a mercy fuck. It hadn't been bad, but that's what it felt like it. It really and truly wasn't what I expected from a marriage of love, and I already was beginning to wonder whether our marriage would survive. Tanya's feeling better now Derek, my wife informed me a few days later. I waited for her to add something to that statement, but she simply carried on with what she was doing. I did the same. Nothing. How did I know that she wouldn't leave it like that? How about if I arrange for something next Tuesday? She asked, trying to sound casual. Such as what, I replied, acting dumb. Not that it fooled her of course. You can have our house again if you want, she continued, as if that generous offer really made any difference. Is this what you really want Wendy? I demanded, managing to keep my voice under control. It's what we both want isn't it honey, she responded immediately. We enjoyed it the last time, so why not? I thought about reminding her that I hadn't enjoyed it the last time at all. In fact the last time I had sat at home on my own while she was off having the time of her life. But what was the point? How about Wednesday instead of Tuesday, I threw in, for no particular reason other than to be awkward. No, she answered. It can only be Tuesday it's got to be Tuesday. Odd very odd, but I chose not to argue and got up and walked away. Something wasn't right here. I didn't know what, but there was something that just didn't add up. Why was Wendy suddenly so eager to make love out of wedlock after seven years of being so happy? Why was she so willing to risk our marriage when she knew full well that I wasn't committed at all? Why were our meetings always on a Tuesday? How did that bugger James get to marry a beautiful young woman like Tanya? Having done so, why did the idiot feel the need to swap? No, something just didn't add up, and I was determined to find out just what. With my connections I was easily able to find out where James Perry lived, and discovering that it was just a few miles away, I made my way over there the following afternoon. I wasn't sure what I was going to do, and in the end I found myself sitting in my jag a few doors down from their house. It was a detached house in its own grounds and must have cost a pretty penny, so he wasn't short of a bob or two. For nearly an hour, nobody arrived or left and I began to feel a bit of a fool. Then the front door opened and out spilled two children about eight or nine years old. They played around in the garden for a bit, and then one shouted see you tomorrow and disappeared up the road, while the other went back inside. Quite normal you may think, but not for me. How on earth would a girl of Tanya's age have a child of that age? Good question eh? While I was pondering this, a Ford Focus pulled up and a nurse in uniform got out. 
I didn't notice whether she locked the car, but she went straight up to the house and went in. What the hell was happening here? I hung around for a little longer but nothing else happened, so I went back to work still puzzled. There had to be an answer. Why would the nurse be there, and where did the kid come from? I was so confused that I could hardly concentrate on my work, and I wandered rather aimlessly round the outer office annoying everyone for no reason. I was being stupid, but couldn't get that bad feeling from eating away at my insides. At last I decided that I was being too silly, and went back to my own office to try to finish off a few loose ends. With great difficulty I started to flip though the pages of a divorce case I was working on. A marriage breakup which both parties wanted, but they were arguing over custody of the kids. Then it came to me simple really. The kid must have been James's by a previous marriage that was it. He must have been divorced and then remarried Tanya, and the kid was living with them. Didn't even have to be living with them and the boy could just have been visiting. But the nurse who the hell might she be? It was a good hour later that I came up with the answer to that one as well. Tanya was ill wasn't she? Or had been? Maybe the nurse was doing a house visit to give her some treatment. Bit thin, but it was as good as I could come up with. Maybe I was worrying about nothing after all, but not surprising when my wife was acting so oddly. So that was okay, wasn't it? But if so, why was something inside me telling me that not all was well? Just one more check, then I promised myself that I'd relax and get on with my life. I rang Tom Black. Tom was a private detective that our company used from time to time, and nobody thought it odd that I should ask him to do a simple check for me. He told me that he would have the information I sought by the next day, and I tried to forget it and get on with my work with a little more success than before. Tom was as good as his word, and the following morning he emailed me what he had found, simply from checking public records. So easy. James Perry age 34 businessman. Philip Perry age 9 schoolboy. Mary Perry age 32 nurse. And that was it. That was everyone who was registered as living at that address. Damn it. What happened to Tanya? Unwell or not, the nurse certainly wasn't going there to look after her. The bloody nurse lived there, and she was James's wife. Bloody hell. By the time Tuesday evening arrived my mind was going round in circles, unable to come to any sensible conclusion. Several times I thought about confronting Wendy with what I had found out, but if there was a sensible explanation, then I would look some sort of fool in everyone's eyes. Besides, the trust between us was already stretched somewhat, and if she found out that I had been checking up on her, then it could be the final straw. No, I decided to go through with the date and see what I could find out from Tanya herself before I had it out with Wendy. I couldn't think of any other way of dealing with it. Always assuming that Tanya turned up of course, and the way things were going that didn't seem too sure. Hi Derek. Nice to see you again. I looked up and there, standing with a hand on her hip, was Tanya, perhaps even more stunning than I had remembered her. I quickly glanced round the bar and took in the jealous looks from all the other guys in the bar, and for that moment at least I felt just fine. Tanya had on high heel sandals and tight black leggings that were all the fashion, with a skimpy little flared skirt that was little more than a token. Her legs looked absolutely fantastic and I felt the urgent need to simply touch them. She looked beautiful, and was giving me a smile that melted my heart. It was those eyes. No it was her legs, or maybe the suggestive swell of those lovely little breasts. No no it was her smile damn it, it was all of her. She was a dream come true. She looked a little surprised when I suggested we stay for a little something to eat, but readily agreed and we went to the table that I had booked. I needed to ask some questions, and I wanted answers before this evening was going much further. Who are you? I asked her quite pointedly once we had settled. Tanya, she laughed at me. After our last evening together you surely haven't really forgotten me already. Yes Tanya, I went on. I know what your name is, but you sure as hell aren't James Perry's wife are you? Tanya lost her smile, dropped her confident gaze, and she visibly swallowed hard. I had really and truly caught her on the hop with that comment. What do you mean Derek? Was all she could manage. Pretty poor really. What I mean is Tanya, if that's really your name, is how come bugger lugs James is swapping you for my wife when you're not even married to him? 
Got her. Tanya tried to grin at me, but thought better of it when she saw the look on my face. She looked round to see if she could slip away maybe, but I had positioned her so she was trapped. I guess I'd better come clean, she offered nervously at last. That might be best, I replied and waited to find out what the hell was going on. Was Tanya his girlfriend? His sister-in-law maybe? Their next-door neighbor? I had no idea. Look Derek, she started. You're a really nice guy, and I'm sorry if I've been part of tricking you a bit. I nodded and waited for her to carry on as she took a huge breath. They paid me to do it, Tanya mumbled at last. They paid you? I almost yelled at her. They paid you to go out with me. To make love to me. What kind of woman are you, for God's sake? The kind of woman who gets paid to make love to strange men, she whispered back, tears in her eyes. I'm sorry, Derek, I'm so sorry. Oh bugger me. Now she caught me on the hop. You're a bleeding prostitute. I shouted at her eventually, forgetting that we were in a public place. Not so loud please Derek, Tanya pleaded with me looking around with a frightened expression. I prefer escort to prostitute, but it's all the same thing really. It suddenly hit me like a train. James had paid this bloody prostitute to play the part of his wife so that he could fuck mine. The bastard. What the hell is Wendy going to say when she finds out what he's done? I demanded. Silly question I still wasn't thinking straight was I? It was even worse than I thought. I think she already knows all about it Derek, Tanya told me uncertainly. It was her who rang me to arrange the times. Oh no. There must be some mistake surely. But I knew right then that there wasn't. Well I hope it wasn't her that paid you, I muttered pathetically, lost for anything else to say. No Derek, Tanya tried to assure me. It was the guys that paid both times. I was so bloody upset. That I nearly missed what she had said, and when I looked up at her she had her hand to her mouth, having realized her mistake. She'd let something else slip. Guys, I queried. Is that guys as in the plural sense? Tanya simply nodded, keeping her mouth tight shut. I breathed in slowly and deeply to calm myself down before I did something that I might regret. I wasn't going to hit her or anything, but I needed to think straight. Explain. I thought that was enough and waited. There are three of them Derek, she went on. James, Mike and Terry. Terry was a client of mine once, so that's how they knew me. I sat there in silence, shaking my head. Sorry, Tanya piped up. Thanks for nothing. I really enjoyed the first time Derek, Tanya carried on. You're a really nice guy and it wasn't like the other dates I normally have. You took so much care to make sure I enjoyed it as well, but when they asked me to do it again the following Tuesday I refused, as once I'd met you I didn't like cheating you. Well that explained why she hadn't turned up for the second date didn't it? Why I'd sat there all night, my stomach churning as I was thinking about some other guy screwing my wife. Turned down by a bloody prostitute. Then I turned cold as it dawned on me. It wasn't some other guy that had been fucking her. It was three of them. My sweet wife had taken part in a gangbang behind my back. I felt vaguely sick as it occurred to me that she was doing the same thing again at that very moment. An image of her soft naked body spread eagled, wide legged on some bed somewhere taunted my brain. Well they always do, don't they? Putting my head in my hands, I fought back the need to break into tears, hardly able to control the way my arms were shaking, hardly able to control my reaction. I'm really sorry, whispered Tanya, gently stroking the back of my head. I should have shrugged her off of course, but it felt reassuring, and relaxed me a little. So why are you here this time? I managed, pushing the awful vision from my mind. They offered me extra money Derek, Tanya replied. Besides, when I thought about it, I quite liked the idea of seeing you again. Ah. So I wasn't turned down by a prostitute. Not sure how that helped though. We talked on for some time, as Tanya willingly told me everything she knew. I couldn't believe I was sitting there quite calmly taking it all in, though my eyes missed it up several times, and I didn't resist when Tanya took my hand in hers and squeezed it. Wendy had gone back to her old ways and was hosting a gangbang, 
using the swinging scene as a way to hopefully lure me eventually into the way of things. That's what she was doing right at that moment while I sat there and talked to Tanya. Did I really know my wife? Had I ever really known her? Does a leopard ever change its spots? The cow had played me for a fool, and I would get my own back. I didn't know how, but I would work on it. Meanwhile as far as I was concerned my marriage was over as dead as a doornail. But I couldn't do much about it at that moment, so what was I to do? Then I looked at Tanya. By God she was so beautiful. Why not? I always was a bit of a pragmatist. Back to my place then? I suggested. Love to Derek, she smiled back at me. So we did. It helped. It helped a lot. Wendy came back early the next morning looking tired, but full of the joys of spring again. Now I could understand why of course. I didn't just want a divorce though, an easy split. I wanted revenge, and I wanted it on all four of them. When she went to kiss me I turned my cheek just enough to unsettle her, but not enough to worry her too much. She'd have time for that later. She looked at me waiting for me to say something. Maybe to tell her what a good time I'd had, or to ask her the same question. I just looked away said nothing. Let the bitch sort out herself what was going through my brain. I already had the seed of an idea, but to see it through I'd have to find out where they all met up. It obviously wasn't at James's house as I doubt that his wife would go along with that, and I'd worked out that it always had to be Tuesday, as the three of them must have an excuse for being out that night. Bowling, drinking, whatever. It didn't really matter. I needed someone to help me as well. Someone who knew them and could find out the information I needed. Who better than Tanya? Besides, I'd really enjoyed both my evenings with her, and the feelings had been mutual. I'd found out quite a lot about her and her situation, and that she'd only been working as an escort for about three months. How many liaisons, or dates as she called them that represented I didn't know, and didn't care to inquire about. Tanya had been halfway through her university course, studying fashion design when she had run seriously out of money. Not a new situation, but when one is as attractive as she undoubtedly was, then the first bar where she sought work was more than pleased to take her on. That soon led to working behind the bar in a nightclub where the pay was better, and the skimpier and more revealing her outfit, than the more tips she got. She'd laughed when she admitted to me quite how much she found she enjoyed it, as she teased the men who tried to peer down her increasingly outrageous little tops. One thing led to another, and she was soon persuaded to try her hand at pole dancing at which she was an immediate success, and believe you me, I could see why. It wasn't long before clients started to ask her out, and she discovered how much money she could really make for an evening's work. She managed to rationalize her behavior, but still ended up dropping out from her studies, which by the time we got to know one another she was beginning to regret in a big way. So, there we were the two of us, and when we parted it was Tanya who had asked me when we could go out again, and no payment was ever mentioned. I wondered whether I was on the brink of jumping out of the frying pan and into the fire. Tanya was only too pleased to help me, and within a couple of days I knew that the four of them, Wendy and her three lovers met on Tuesday evenings at the Paramore Hotel the other side of town. Well at least her lovers weren't skinflints, as that hotel was the most expensive for miles. Though the cost of hiring Tanya should have already told me that. Not only that, but I even had the room number they always used, and that it was a corner room on the second floor alongside the fire escape. Perhaps they expected me to break in and confront them and left them an escape route. Well that wasn't going to happen, but it didn't mean they weren't in for a surprise, and I could hardly wait for the next Tuesday to come along. I wouldn't need Tanya that night for what I had planned, so I simply told Wendy that I would be out of town that night on business. What will you do sweetheart while I'm away? I asked her innocently. Oh I'll probably stay at home, she replied. Or I might go out to the pictures with one of the girls from work. Oh you. I bet. The look in the bitches I told me otherwise. 8.30 on the dot and I was in the lobby of the Paramore Hotel, newspaper in hand in case I needed to hide myself. I was on my second beer by the time I spotted Wendy sauntering down towards the grand winding staircase, sporting high heels, a fashionably short tight skirt, expensive looking blouse and as far as I could make out very little else. Very classy indeed. I have to say that she did look good, 
and a lump formed in my throat at the thought of how she was cheating on me. Of how she had been deceiving me for I knew not how long. If all went to plan that night, then it was unlikely that we'd ever share a bed again, and for just a moment I regretted that we hadn't made love together much in the last few weeks. Oh well. Wendy, I heard someone call and she turned round and smiled radiantly at some guy I'd never seen before. I guessed that this had to be either Mike or Terry. Hi Terry, Wendy called back to him, confirming my thoughts. Aren't Mike and James with you? They're already up there, he informed her, lowering his voice as he approached her. Then he took her in his arms and pulled her close. Wendy responded and wrapped her arms round his neck, pulling his lips down to hers, and honoring him with a long smoldering kiss. Just love? If it was only love, I'd like to see what kind of affection it was. If there had been anything left in my heart, then it would have snapped. He broke off the embrace, circled her slender waist with his arm and led her off up the staircase, his hand casually sliding down to cup her lovely round bottom. My eyes were far from the only ones that followed them as she went with him, giggling girlishly at something he said. I would think most of the men looking on couldn't help but feel a tingle of jealousy knowing full well what they were off to do. I just felt an emptiness in the pit of my stomach. The cow. The bitch. My cheating bloody wife. There were however other eyes that I hoped were looking on at the affectionate embrace, though as much as I glanced around I couldn't detect who they might be. Another ten minutes or so and they gave the game away, even if I was the only one who noticed. Three men, all a bit on the large size, detached themselves from where they had been sitting and approached the reception. They were joined there by a woman who came from the other direction and if anything seemed to be in charge. I peered intently over the top of my newspaper and watched as the woman showed the pretty girl behind the desk something she withdrew from her jacket, causing the girl to look startled. A few words from the woman and the pretty young thing disappeared through a doorway behind the counter, only to return almost immediately with an older quite distinguished looking chap. The manager purr. APS? That or his number two maybe. A few more words and the manager quite clearly handed over a key and nodded to the woman. To me this was all played out very clearly in front of me, though I seriously doubt if anybody else in the hotel so much as noticed what game was being played out. Only when two uniformed police officers appeared from outside and stationed themselves at the entrance did a few people start to look up, and then their interest didn't last that long. Little did they know how much their interest was about to take a leap. For that matter even I never imagined quite how much it would leap. The four plainclothes police officers casually made their way to the grand staircase, trying not to attract too much attention. They easily bounded up the steps and disappeared from view. I sat there with bated breath wondering quite how this would pan out, and pondering whether I'd maybe gone too far and could end up in trouble myself. Then silence. Then a commotion. The police had been given a tip-off about a drugs party that regularly took place at the hotel, and that prostitution was also involved. The police had been particularly interested when the names of two of the participants were mentioned, one of them in particular being no great friend of theirs. Quite who actually phoned the police I honestly and truly don't know, though I have to confess to knowing in advance what was said. Handy being a solicitor and having connections in such low places. I relished the thought of watching as my cheating wife was bought through the hotel, hopefully handcuffed and under arrest. Though I realized I would be lucky to actually get that wish, and that any charges would be unlikely to be upheld, it was her humiliation that I sought as my revenge. I really wanted to confront her with her cheating infidelity. It didn't happen that way of course. It never does. But what did happen was bloody marvelous and beyond all my wildest dreams. Unknown to me, or Tanya for that matter, the group of them rented not just one room but two. Whether that was to give some of them another room to rest in between sessions, or to prevent the noise of their fuckfest from disturbing other guests I didn't know, though intimately knowing how noisy Wendy could be when aroused, then I would plump for the latter. When the police entered the room surprising the four miscreants, then apparently two of them panicked. One of the men was quickly bought down, but Wendy bless her little white cotton socks, managed to slip out into the other room before they could catch her. From there she shot out into the corridor and out of the fire escape to get away. It was only when she was halfway across the car park and felt the sharp stones under her bare feet that it must have dawned on her that she was still completely naked. What a laugh! 
Everyone in the reception area watched in astonishment as this beautiful naked young blonde street passed the large windows, her breasts flopping about all over the place. The two uniformed police automatically took chase, but Wendy shuddered to a halt as she realized her predicament. I couldn't help but smile as I stood there watching as my cheating wife was marched back into the hotel, her hands handcuffed behind her, her captors making no effort to help cover up her modesty. She hung her head down in shame and embarrassment, unable to cover up her naked body, flinching visibly at the flashes as various members of the public took the opportunity to photograph the incredible almost unbelievable scene. Thank you to whoever it was that invented the camera on the mobile phone. Wendy staggered right by me, not more than 10 feet from me, so upset that she was totally unaware of my presence, as she cried her heart out. As they urged her forcibly back up the staircase, Wendy's rather delicious bare bottom was I supposed, to be the last part of her anatomy that I was likely to see uncovered. It was time for me to disappear. Never in my wildest dreams did I ever expect it to work out so well. The Upshot Of course Wendy never got charged with anything, though Terry was found to have a small quantity of prescribed substances on him, and eventually was given a suspended sentence. He didn't go to prison, but since he was a candidate to be the local member of parliament, it certainly ended his plans for the future and his career. I suspect it may also have ended his marriage. James's wife sued for divorce and took him to the cleaners. It appears that he was the junior one in the setup, bought in by the other two to do the dirty work of conning me face to face. No more to be said. But Mike. Well it turned out that Mike was probably the ringleader. It turned out in fact that he and Wendy had likely been having an affair for some months previously. It was he who had introduced his two pals to Wendy and he who had the idea of tricking me into sharing my wife with them. So how did he get on then you're probably wondering. Well Mike, that is circuit judge, Michael St. John Milesworth, came off rather badly as it happened. The press made a meal of it to say the least. Several of the people at the hotel who were taking photos must have contacted the newspapers, and though I hadn't stopped to see it, there were photos of him being led complaining from the hotel, his hands cuffed behind him, and they appeared on the front page of just about every rag in the country. The fact that my lovely wife was assisting a silk from her chambers in a court case at that very time, and that it was Milesworth who was presiding, helped to push the boat out somewhat, and the story ran for days and days. Questions were asked in the house, and the Prime Minister himself became involved in the scandal, demanding the resignation of the eminent judge on a television show a few days later. He was finished, and though he hadn't maybe actually broken any laws as such, Mike would never be able to work in the legal profession again. I'm not sure what happened to him, but he just seemed to drop out of sight. Poor sod. I think not. So that was about it really. Oh no I forgot about my wonderful wife didn't I? H.I. sweetheart, I greeted her on the phone when I rang her the day after the incident. Hello Derek, answered Wendy, sounding rather depressed, though I pretended not to notice. Where are you? I'm still over in Paris sweetheart, I lied, since I was sitting in a pub not five miles from our home. Sorry but I'll be stuck here for a couple of more days. Can't you come straight home honey? She pleaded, but I told her it was impossible. That she'd have to wait a little longer. Have you read the newspapers honey? She asked, her voice distinctly wavering. Haven't seen any English newspapers for sale where I am, I lied again. Why? Oh nothing honey, Wendy went on. What about the TV? No Wendy, I continued to tease her. Been far too busy. Why has something interesting happened at home? No Derek, nothing special. Well that is? Well. Oh can't you please come straight home? Please honey, we need to talk. Soon as I've finished what I'm here to do sweetheart, I promised. Okay, she went on. Please Derek don't forget that I love you will you? Whatever you hear, don't forget you're the only one I love. I could detect that Wendy was close to tears, but I chose to pretend I hadn't noticed. However I did pick up on her odd remark. Well if you love me that much sweetheart, don't be tempted to get together with that scumbag James while I'm away, will you? All I heard was a sort of choking sound on the other end of the line. I really meant to talk to you before I left sweetheart, I went on. I'm really not happy with this swapping and swinging thing you've got us into, and I think we ought to stop before it ruins our marriage. 
Okay, she gagged back. If that's what you want. I've never said, but I've been worried sick that you might be tempted to carry the thing on further Wendy, and I simply couldn't stand that. It would be the end of our marriage. Oh Derek, she cried down the line, and this time I could hear her sobbing. Love you Wendy, I ended our little talk with a promise that I had no intention of keeping to. See you in a couple of days when I get back. I heard a sob, which I chose to ignore. I sat there thinking about our conversation for a few moments, then picked up my pint and took a sip. I couldn't resist reaching for the newspaper that I had been reading before I had rang Wendy. There on the front page was a pretty clear photo of my wife, tears streaming down her face as the policeman led her through the hotel foyer. In deference to public decency, they had added a well-placed star right at the junction of her shapely thighs, but her fine breasts were out on full display for all to see and admire. Wendy had great tits, and they were about to become the most famous pair of bare knockers in the whole of the UK. The photos would have made it to the papers anyway, but when it featured a pretty young barrister at law, caught naked with a top judge, then that really was top news. As I said it ran for days and days, and for almost the whole week pictures of my bare, naked wife were splattered everywhere. Once one publication risked leaving off the discreet star, then all the others followed, and that gave them the encouragement to run the whole series of photos once again. Someone had even managed to snap one of her as she'd streaked across the car park. Everyone in the world got to know that my wife shaved her pussy bear, except for a small landing strip. The internet people made a meal of it. I believe she got an offer from Playboy to pose, but then again that could have been just a tale, and I never had it confirmed, as we never actually met up again to have any friendly little chats. She lost her job of course, and ended up working as a legal assistant in some obscure firm of solicitors up north. I arranged our divorce myself, and that's where I watched her crying in court as the judge, not Mike that is of course, ripped into her. The judgment went seriously against her. Well that's the end of my little tale, which I hope you appreciated. Got to go now as I've a hot date with a very attractive young woman who was about to graduate from her university having finished her studies in the world of fashion design. They say she has a great future in that industry, and has long since given up her other career. Whether Tanya and I will make it in the long term is anyone's guess. I sort of hope so. Glutton for punishment though aren't I? Plus 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 plus. I'd like to think they lived happily ever after. By all means, please let me know what you think.